Love and peace. This is a little impromptu video because I am going to get back into recording and posting videos. And I was sitting here and I was about to post some cards for myself. And I said, I should probably listen to the thought <laughs> of recording a video and um, share the energy that I'm going to pull for today with everyone else. And I'm not going to say for the collective at this time, what I will say is that for those that it is um, designed for them to receive the message. Um, so for those that you're new here, this is Shine Your Light 777. And I am a Robin, Robbie or Goddess Robin. Um, I do a myriad of things. However, one of the things that I'm going to be doing now that I'm back from my hiatus is doing Oracle card readings. Um, and mainly it's going to be the energy of pulling the cards to see what the frequency, the vibration, or what messages or communications are available for us that will assist us on our higher path and purpose at this time. And today, the Oracle deck that I will be using is the Starseed Oracle by Rebecca Campbell. Artwork, artwork by the... Hmm, let's try that again. The Oracle deck is by Rebecca Campbell. And the artwork is by Danielle Noel. And I have really connected with this deck. Um, this deck has shared some very profound messages in terms of where I am and where the Most High is taking me. Um, it's been a lot of synchronicities, a lot of synchronicities um, that I've experienced when I do readings based upon other um, forms of communication that I receive um, for guidance and support throughout my journey. Um, again, if you're new here, I primarily focus on being able to assist um, different entities and, and spirits and to navigate being here in this physical realm here on earth because it is ghetto here. It's ghetto here and we don't have the manual we came through the veil of forgetfulness and we don't even remember why we're here, right? So it gets challenging navigating these earthly waters. And because of the myriad of experiences that I've had, the myriad of lessons that I've learned and the higher knowledge that um, I've had the blessing to be taught um, or downloaded with, I um, step into my purpose and live in my purpose of being able being able to assist others and navigate in their journey. Um, we all are here for different specific purposes. However, the universal purpose is to be here to learn um, and elevate from where we currently are to from the 3D to the 5D, 7D, whatever D realm um, that you're in or that you would like to, to elevate to from being in the 3D realm. Also, on this channel, I utilize a lot of words interchangeably because I'm very aware that some people are sensitive to the language. However, I ask that whatever word best resonates with you, you replace whatever word I say, whether it be the Most High, whether it be God, whether it be Allah, the universe, um, interchange it. If I say the spirit team and you prefer the angels or you prefer Jesus or whatever it is, just feel free to interchange it because it's more important that you receive the idea to benefit you on your growth and development than it is for us to get caught up in titles, okay? Um, and if titles are so important to you that you don't want the message, I do respect that and you can keep scrolling. However, um, I'm going to go ahead. I've, I've been shuffling for a little while now. Um, I've already opened and cleared the space to receive um, what is for us. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a specific spread. I think I'll just pull the cards and read the messages and allow them to resonate where they will uh, for the sake of this being my I'm back video. And as you can see, I don't even have it all set up all perfect and pretty. I'm not even in the space that I'm gonna be in when I do the videos. Although I think I might stay in this space and just do something just a tad bit different. I might do this um, this way. I'm not sure. However, um, we're going to get started. I'm going to pull the cards and read the messages. Um, I will share how they resonate with me if anything comes up. 
Um, if not, you can just simply take the messages for what they are, allow them to resonate, and I will that they add um, to your day as well as give some insight and support to you on your journey. Okay? All right. Spirit, what messages do you have for us today? What would you like us to know that will assist us in our higher path and purpose? I'm also getting a rhythm with how how I'm going to choose them. However, it's resonating for me to cut the decks and four and pull out four cards. All right. Right at the bottom of the deck is weight. It's not yet time. Things are being woven. It was at the bottom of the deck. And the first card out is Star Family. You're part of a team of souls calling support. Earth, learning how to be human in the world but not of it. The courageous peony, multifaceted, unique nature. Let yourself be seen. And child of the cosmos. The intelligence of the universe lies within you. So I do believe I'm going to read all five, including weights, because it's resonated with me to do so. How about we'll start at the beginning. I'll do weight last, and hopefully that frequency uh, flows. All right, Star Family, I'll show you the card. Star Family, you're part of a team of souls calling support. At some stage, we were each a part of a soul cluster, a gathering of souls who broke away from one another to experience themselves individually. Those who are part of your soul cluster are part of your, your star family. Your star family are those souls who are cut from a similar cosmic cloth. You haven't just experienced lifetimes together. Your souls were once actually one. It's very common for star family members to incarnate at similar times to work with anchoring a similar frequency of light and to cross paths with each other. You know that someone is part of your star family when you feel like you know and remember them from the moment you meet. They feel instantly familiar and comfortable. Time both passes quickly and stretches when you're with them. You feel more yourself with them than anyone else. It can sometimes feel like looking in the mirror because in a way you are. Often you'll go out of your way to help those in your star family, instinctively knowing it's part of your path. When a star family member dies, you feel it very deeply, regardless of how long you know them. A certain soul mourning or soul breaking occurs. Think about the people in your life. Who do you feel is a part of your star family? If this card comes up in a spread, it's likely that you've met someone who is a part of your star family or you're about to. Star C Soul Inquiry. Who do you think is from the same star family as you? How can you call upon them for support? Now that really resonates with me because where I'm at in my journey is calling in um, my tribe and I've experienced different ones of my tribe finding me and being able to make the connection. Um, and because of where the most high is taking me, it's important to have a team. And I feel like all of us as um, spiritual beings having a physical experience, it's important for us to have a team, to have ones around us that support us when we're growing and evolving because being a spiritual being, having a physical experience is a lonely journey a lot of the times. And depending on your purpose and why you're here, you can experience this loneliness at a more intense level than others may, especially if you're more like energy sensitive or you're more empathic or um, you thrive being in community. Um, depending on what your um, human design is, there's different channels in a human design chart that shows if you are part of the collective um, or if you're 
I say, because we're all part of the collective, if you are directly plugged into the energy of the collective and you thrive as being a part of community, some of us do not thrive being part of community. Um, some of us do. So you, the, the experiences are different. So willfully that resonated for you. Um, if you are experiencing the loneliness, if you are in the process of manifesting your soul tribe or your star family, whichever one resonates with you. Um, willfully, that serves as a confirmation that either you've met someone or you are about to meet someone. All right. So the next one is earth, learning how to be human in the world, but not of it. Okay. The challenge for all souls having a human experience is to be in the world, but not of it. To realize they are souls having a human experience and be fully conscious of it. To have their soul fully embody their body. People's personalities tend to relate to either transcendence or eminence. Those who lean towards transcendence have a longing for the heavens and the metaphysical. They yearn for a personal experience with God and to be lost in the heavens. They're envious of the angels and are more comfortable praying and hanging out in the stars than on earth. Those who tend towards eminence have attached themselves more to earth in their body. They spend more time thinking about things in the physical world rather than connecting with the heavens or their own mystical inner worlds. Being a fully embodied soul, having a human experience means finding the balance between transcendence and eminence. Being in the world, but not of it. Most starseeds are drawn towards transcendence. They're more comfortable with the angels and the heavens. Life on earth can be more difficult for them. If this is you, you're being reminded that you chose to be a soul and a body on earth, and you're being called to focus more of your energies in the physical world, to learn how to be human, a soul and a human body, fully present to what life on earth has to offer you. Star Sea Soul Inquiry. Do you tend to long for the stars or be more in the physical? How can you find greater balance between the two? I can definitely relate to that. I've actually been a bit of both um, at different parts of my life. And I would like to offer to you um, what worked for me. If you find yourself being in either one of the two, mainly the transcendence, um, being more heart centered helps you be grounded into your body. It helps you to be present in your body. And what I mean by that is when you connect with your the energy of your heart center, your heart space, when you focus on balancing your heart chakra, when you operate from I feel, instead of burying your feelings or ignoring your feelings or denying your feelings um, or, well, yes, acknowledging and recognizing and honoring that you have a feeling about something will keep you in your heart space. Um, one of the things that I experienced in my journey being here is um, taking the higher road. And in me taking the higher road to be the righteous being that I am, a lot of things that I have feelings and thoughts about, I chose not to speak on them. I chose not to like ruffle the feathers or, you know, trouble the waters um, or stir the pot. And as a result of me doing that for so long, it took me out of my heart space and it caused me to be um, out of my body a lot of the time because my body, our physical bodies, they record everything, right? They record the emotions and the body is holding the emotions somewhere in the body is being held. And if you're familiar with the emotion code, the emotion code speaks about um, how trapped emotions um, get stuck in our body, and then we have physical ailments that bear witness to there being a trapped emotion in our body. So um, as a result of me doing that for so long, I was detached from my body, and I wasn't experiencing the fullness of the emotions because I didn't want to, right? So I would leave my, a lot of me would leave my body. So if you find yourself being in a transcendent state, then that's a technique that you can utilize. Focus on expressing or acknowledging um, your feelings, exploring them, understanding them, and then honoring them. You don't have to stay stuck in them. You don't have to give them power. You don't even have to respond 
from them. Like you don't have to operate from them. I feel like I look like Medusa. Um, you don't have to operate from them or give them any power. However, it is important that you honor yourself and be true to you um, to acknowledge that you have a feeling and then allow yourself to go through the human experience to process them. And when you do that, then you'll be able to release the emotion, see the idea, receive the lesson in it, and then be able to grow and evolve from there as being the spiritual being and having the earthly physical experience. And then your body can release the emotion. And another indicator for you know anybody that you know, cares to know that the tears are an indicator of the release of emotions, right? Um, they release the energy. So oftentimes we find ourselves holding back from crying. I used to be that person. I used to hold back my tears because I felt like tears were a sign of weakness. And I didn't have time for crying because there was so much that needed to be done that required my attention that if I were to drop the ball, things would be affected. So crying opened the doorway for a ball to be dropped and I couldn't have that. So I reserved that for a later time. And as a result, I was putting a, a glitch or a blockage in place for the natural system that the most high put in place for us to release the energy. It's just like the same principle of geysers on the planet um, with earth. Like earth is a live living thing. And in order for the, the energy to be released, there's volcanoes and there's geysers. I think there's one more thing, but we'll speak about those two. When there's too much energy, they get released through the geysers. They get released through the volcanoes. Imagine if the energy that is coming out of the lava, the energy that's coming out of the volcano, or that that gas, that steam that comes out of the geysers, if it wasn't released, what would that do to the planet? At some point, I think it would be reasonable for us to um, understand or associate that the planet would explode, right? The, it would explode from the inside. So it would implode, which on the outside, we would ultimately be affected. So it's the same principle with us. When we hold any of these emotions and we don't freely let them flow, we're affecting ourselves inward, which then translates into something in our body. So it's important that we be earth, we be grounded, we be present, we be here to learn the lessons that's needed to go through the process so that we can elevate and graduate to the next level in our time here on earth. So um, if you are one that is um, transcendent, not transcendence, what's the other word? The one that is more plugged into the earth. I've already changed the page. If you're one that's more plugged into the earth, then you want to spend more time in nature. You want to be out. You want to be laying on the blanket, staring at the clouds. You want to sit near the stream, the creek, the lakes, by the ocean. Um, you want to take a walk in, in, the, in the forest, on the trail. You want to be more present in nature so it will allow for your thoughts to be more loftier and elevated instead of being so rooted and grounded in the physical activity. Being able to acknowledge and bear witness that there is majesty that takes place around us every day from the most high, the creator, that it shows us or it keeps our thoughts lofty to be able to elevate past the physical realm and have that connection with the most high that we're designed to have while we're here. So willfully that assist. The next one that we have is, oh, I guess I didn't go. Um, the courageous peony. The Courageous Peony. All right. Multifaceted, unique, excuse me, multifaceted, unique nature. Let yourself be seen. Flowers don't open and close according to who walks by. They embrace all of what they are and show it to the world around them. The peony doesn't try to compete with the cherry blossom and the cherry blossom doesn't try to compete with the tulip. They own what they are and trust the timing of their true nature. You're being called to do the same. It's time to open yourself up to being seen. Time to share your incredible, multifaceted, true nature with the world around you. To uncover and reveal your soul's greatest gifts without wavering. To own your uniqueness without apology. There's a flower on this planet that holds the same qualities that your soul is readying itself to express. Let it inform you. 
you may have been taught that it's safer to keep your light hidden and your voice small, to hide behind the bushes instead of growing tall. The Courageous Peony is here to remind you that it's safe to embody all of who you truly are. It's safe to share your voice and let yourself be seen. At first, it may, may feel uncomfortable and you may be afraid of what others think. But with each passing day, it does become easier, little to, by little, and realize that it draws in those who are meant for you. And experiences you've been longing for arrive at your feet. Start see soul inquiry. How are you being called to allow yourself to be more visible and seen in the world? And as you can see, um, I'm a little emotional, releasing some of that energy because this really hits home, which is why I'm back <laughs> making these videos for those that it will benefit. Um, and it's me answering the call. It's me stepping into my purpose, stepping into the light where I don't always feel the most comfortable. However, I understand that um, the experiences that I've had here on earth, I've experienced a multitude of experiences in one lifetime that many people experience over the course of lifetimes. So because of that, I have a responsibility to offer the support to those that are seeking the support to get through those experiences, if only to be an example that if I got through it, you could get through it too. You don't have to use my techniques. You don't have to use the tools that I use. You don't have to believe what I believe. You don't have to like what I say. Just to simply know that there's somebody out there that has gone through what you're going through and they got through it can give so much inspiration and so much encouragement to get through. So if you are watching this and you are one of the individuals that are feeling called or are being called to do or respond to a certain idea, this is your message to step out and respond. And in you stepping out and respond, those that are designed to receive will be called, they will find you and you will be living your purpose. And even if nobody finds you, if nobody ever watches these videos, I am comfortable and confident in knowing that at the completion of this, I can say to the most high, I heard the call and I responded. I did what I was supposed to do. And I'm appreciative of the opportunity to have been able to be in service. Now, I don't have nothing to do with if others don't receive it, if others don't accept it, and neither do you, friend, okay? So don't even worry about that. Stay focused on what resonates with you. Respond, show up, be courageous like the peony, and don't overthink and be concerned about all the rest of that. And everything will fall in place, okay? Right, the next card is Child of the Cosmos. The intelligence of the universe lies within you. There's a mysterious force that governs all of life. An intelligence that tells flowers when to bloom and tides and seasons when to come and go. That intelligence is within you too. It was there before you drew your first breath and it will be there beyond your last. It's the part of you that informed every cell what to do when you were in your mother's womb. It's harder to resist this force than it is to surrender to it. Because Earth is a planet of polarity and free will, it's easy to forget that this intelligence exists within us. So often we become disconnected from the pulse of life and fall into the pattern of believing that we're separate or feeling that we need to go to it alone. We can feel isolated and as if we need to figure things out for ourselves to rely on our own strength. You're being called to remember the intelligence that's within each and every one of your cells, to remember that you're a precious child of a loving, gentle universe, that you have access to all of the intelligence, wisdom, strength, flow, and qualities that ever were, are, or will be. And to remember that if flowers know exactly when and how to bloom, then you do too. Star, see, soul, inquiry. How can you surrender more deeply to the intelligent flow of life? One thing about spirit, spirit going to have some synchronicities. Spirit's going to have these cars connecting. The peony being the flower and the rhythm of nature and being um, courageous and responding just like how nature does. 
and then the connection with the child of the cosmos and utilizing nature as the example um, of flowers knowing when to bloom. And we know as well. And it speaks hand in hand with the idea of when you hear the message, when you hear the idea, whatever it is, respond to it. You'll know. Sometimes we put pressure on ourselves like we have to respond right now. We have to do it right now. And that's not always the case. Sometimes the message or the idea is shared with us so that we can sit with it, so that we can rotate on it, so we can explore it, so we can get comfortable, so we can get prepared for what's coming. It's not always when the message comes, you need to come right now. You need to do it right now because I've been getting this message that I need to get back into doing these videos for a little while now. I want to say it's maybe been about two to three weeks it's been coming. It's been more consistent the longer that I've been sitting on it. However, um, I've been allotted the time to get my mind right, get my mental right, to to rest, to relax, to give myself the spaciousness that I need to be present in my body, to really be sure that I'm listening and receiving it. I also, I mentioned earlier about human design. Um, I have to have a a yes, a full body yes. I have to be fully present because if not, when I do it, it's not. It won't be in my full authenticity. It'll be because I'm being told to, or I think that the Most High wants me to, and I don't want to be a disappointment. Versus me resonating with it and responding because it resonates. I definitely encourage us as humans um, to do what resonates with us, and that's one of the things that I've prided myself on and being here on Earth more so now than ever before because. A lot of the time I did what resonated. However, there are times where I did not in my growth and my overthinking and my consideration of others or situations and circumstances. I did not always respond to what resonated with me. And for that, I learned quite a bit of lessons. I learned quite a bit of lessons that have me so much more rooted to doing what responds to me across the board, right? There was always a time where I was doing what resonated. However, there was times where I didn't do everything that resonated um, or I did things that I thought were right based on the circumstances and what was being presented to me. And it was me doing the best that I could with the understanding and the knowledge that I had in the circumstances that I was in. But like we were taught, when you learn better, you do better. So I'm encouraging you to do what resonates with you, regardless of what it looks like. Forget what you did in the past. Forget what you did yesterday, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, because who you were back then is not who you are today. So stop judging yourself and measuring yourself according to the standards or that measuring stick from who you were back then, because that person no longer exists. We honor them. We appreciate our past self. However, our present self deserves the opportunity to show up in full authenticity of what resonates with us now without the guilt, the shame, the embarrassment, or whatever else from us of the past because we're new. Every day we're growing and evolving, or at least we're supposed to. That is the goal, right? So hopefully that resonates. And this will be the last card. I mean, we're already at 27 minutes, so I'm going to try to see if I keep it on the 30. And this one is, wait, it's not yet time. Things are being woven. In our fast, loud, reactive, comparative world, where an instant response is so often expected and at times even a currency, it can feel almost impossible to take a breath, let alone give ourselves the space to rest, wait, and reset. We're so often in overdrive, expecting instantaneous results over and over again. And when guidance doesn't come at these extreme speeds, it can feel as though something's gone wrong. But often not receiving guidance is guidance in itself. When you ask for guidance and don't receive it, it can often mean, wait, it's not yet time. The details are being woven. Our challenge is to keep trusting. When on the surface, it appears that nothing is happening. So remember that no matter how long or bitter the winter, spring does always come. So remember that you don't need to solve all of the world's problems in a single day. And that perhaps there'll be better solved with some perspective and a good night's sleep. This card is your permission to slip, to slow down, switch off, and rest. You're being reminded to have patience and to trust the mystery of life, to trust that things are being woven on your behalf. It may not be happening to the timeline you'd like, 
But if you gather up the patience, it will be orchestrated better than you can ever imagine. Star C Soul Inquiry. How can you slow down, be more patient, and wait? When I tell you <laughs> it, it is so beautiful, the synchronicities and how everything connect, because this is exactly what I was just speaking about, about responding to the call. When you get the indicator, when you get the message, you don't have to always respond right then. Take the time, create the spaciousness, resonate in the frequency of the vibration, envision what you're going to do. Map out a plan, journal, go sit out in nature and ground, ask for confirmation, or just be patient and trust that the sign that you need that it's time for you to move out will come or trust that you being connected to the cosmos to the universal intelligence that is also a part of you that you will know when it's time to step out and do what's required of you so it is at 30 minutes and some seconds now willfully this message reaches all those that it's intended i will nothing for you but love and peace and I will that this assist you in shining your light. Until the next time, love and peace.